New Deep Seek Sparse Attention Mechanism is the future of AI because it solves quadratic scaling of the attention. And this makes it almost linear. They will highly likely use this in Deep Seek V4 as well. I wrote a blog post on how this works. This is for self-studying. It's very good blog post. And now I will explain uh, this as well. Link to this blog post is below. So the prerequisites, I recommend understanding attention mechanism and deep seek uh, multi-head latent attention. So if you just scroll here and you'll see, uh, I got this course uh, deep seek V3 from scratch. So if you don't understand attention, you just start watching this from the beginning. Here I explain both attention mechanism and uh, deep seek multi-head latent attention. So you see the timestamps, attention mechanism, uh, key query, quick key query value, and then multi-head latent attention. So this is well explained as well. So I will explain MLA again here uh, quickly. First, let's see this image. You see the classic determinus, uh, the classic, their multi-head latent attention is this blue curve. So you see it has a very strong scaling while the new Deep seek sparse attention has a lot smaller scaling. So this is a lot better here. And the way they do this is very simple. Instead of doing attention with every previous token, they do attention with just previous number K of tokens. For example, 2048 previous most important tokens. So for each token, uh, their mechanism finds the previous 2000, just 2000 most relevant tokens that will give most context to this new token. If you look at attention mechanism, you will see that each token is actually paying most attention to only a few tokens, few places. If you ask uh, who did something and uh, they will just pay attention to the name from the text of that person, they will not pay attention to every other token, just a few uh, tokens, for example, uh, 2000 tokens and I think this is even like a lot of tokens to pay attention to as well. Uh, I think this can be even uh, smaller. So most of the time you don't even need to pay attention to 2000 previous tokens. So no matter how long the sequence length is, it can be 2 million tokens. This will just pay attention to 2000 most important tokens anyways. So how do we calculate uh, this, these 2000 most important tokens? Join my school to become AI researcher, link below. I want to show you here that I said we only pay attention to 2000 tokens, but then why is this curve uh, still rising a little bit? Because it should be constant. The computation or cost should be constant because we are always uh, pay attention to the same amount of tokens. So there is also a bit of scaling. So what is this scaling with the sequence length? To calculate the most important tokens, they still do full attention across every previous token. But this attention is just to find the most important tokens and is a lot smaller and less computationally demanding. So they use a fewer number of heads. They use a lot smaller vectors. And this is a lot fast. So they call it lightning indexer. So basically, we split this dense or heavy attention with every token into two parts. First, small attention just to find the most important tokens. And this attention mechanism I'll explain later. I'll give you better intuition later. And then after you find most important, you just do attention with those 2000 or whatever the number is most important tokens. And you see here in the beginning how this curve actually follows this scaling. It actually grows even faster, even more. So in the beginning, it's even more computationally expensive for small sequences. Why? Because if we are looking for the past 2000 tokens, but let's say our current sequence length is just 1000 tokens, then we will not only do same dense attention to those 1000 tokens, because in the beginning it's less, but we also need to perform this small attention like um, step that we find important scores as well. So we do two attention, small and big attention if the sequence length in the beginning is the smaller than the 2000 tokens. So it grows a bit faster. There is more computation if the sm very small sequence length. Maybe an optimization idea here would be if the sequence length, our context window is less than our top K most important tokens number, then we don't even do this uh, lightning indexer because we anyways need to uh, do attention across every single token because the sequence length is less than our top K number. 
By the way, guys, we are also at Open Super Intelligence Lab. We are doing our own research on this deep six parse attention and we're going to publish everything. So I've been trying to uh, train some LLM here. I got good results with it. Um, and you can just click here, contribute here, or you can check like our research and LLM and how to train and you can also participate. So how does this lightning indexer work that calculates uh, most important tokens? It's very simple. I should scroll more into this like this. The formula is actually a lot simpler than it seems. So this is the score, uh, the importance between the current token T and the previous token S, whatever the current and previous token we are calculating right now. And this just means that we calculate the importance score for each head separately. So key and query are divided into heads and each key query head we separately divide uh, calculate the, the important score for each head and then sum them up. So from one to number of heads, we sum them up all, all of the scores of the heads. Everything is explained here below. You can check, you can read uh, self-study. Also, I have a button on the top of the blog to copy the whole blog, put it into chat GPT or whatever AI to help you understand it. So then how do we actually calculate uh, this affinity score or attention? So it it's same as the classic attention. We take a query, head query, so just query from one head or each head separately, and multiply dot product with the key of the previous token. So current tokens query, previous tokens key, multiply, and then for each head. And we just use ReLU because two reasons. So we need something fast, and it doesn't need to be so precise or so good. We just need a quick, fast score. So this, we're, this is very fast to compute and we don't need anything more sophisticated. It's a simple attention. And then interestingly, there is also this weight. So this is also derived from the current token and it's just going to multiply this activation to tell us how much, how important this score is. So how much of the score we want to take. So this is also a bit like now, why do we need this? I'm not sure yet. This is what we want to figure out with our research below. So you can also do this research. Why do we need to actually multiply or diminish this uh, activation here for each head separately? So this is created from the current token. And AI will learn how to create this weight to multiply, to increase or reduce the, this number. So again, this is the research, one of our research questions, like why do we need this? Uh, you can do experiments uh, and help us. And then once we have those important scores, which are like this I, so important score, uh, we have them for every, between every two token combinations possible. So then we just calculate the attention. So this is the classic attention in transformer, but just with 2000 or top 2000, so top K can be 2000 highest scores. So calculate attention between the query and key. I'll explain this a bit of confusing, but between the classic query and key, only if this key belongs to the top like 2000 tokens. So self-study available here as well. Uh, this HT is a bit confusingly named because here it represents query, but in previous formula, it represented the hidden vector, hidden vector embedding of the token. So heads up for that. And how they train this. So they started from the DeepSeq v3.1 uh, terminus. So they just adapted the existing model to work with this. In the first phase, they freeze, they don't train the base DeepSeq v3.1 terminus. They don't train that in the first phase. The first phase, they just train this lightning indexer. So this thing that's finding most important tokens. And it's very simple how they do it. They just look how the frozen base model would assign, would look at attention, like how it calculates attention, what, uh, where it takes, from which tokens it takes most information pays most attention to and then just train the lightning indexer to match that probability distribution to also uh, make those tokens most important or to indicate that they should be 
they sh the, the current token should pay most attention to them. And they use scale divergence loss, which is uh, to measure difference between two probability distributions of the base model and of the new training trained uh, lightning indexer. And then in the second stage, they once they trained uh, this lightning indexer well enough, they just put it onto the model and now continue training all together. Now they unfroze the base model as well, DeepSeq V3.1 Terminus. And now they just train it the classic way. So they're gonna take 2000 most like most important tokens. And it's very simple. They just train it to predict next token. To make sure the comparison is fair, they use the exact same data uh, for the V3.1 Terminus and V3.2. Uh, to compare them and interestingly they are using synthetic data so it says here that they developed specialized models for for example math competitive programming and agentic coding and each of those specialized models is used to generate synthetic data to train this final uh, model DeepSeq 3.1 and DeepSeq 3.2 in the end they just use their grpo to merge so they gave it all of the data containing agentic stuff, math, uh, human aligned preferences, everything. Uh, you want to train on all of the combined data to prevent this catastrophic forgetting where if you just train on one thing and then later train on the other thing, then model will change weights to adapt to the other thing, but then it will mess up its knowledge because the weights now are changed. So you combine that data, so now it's going to like change weights to be able to know both of the things if you train if you put them together uh, below are is some of our research so we want to ask uh, does sparse attention improve performance on standard attention architectures i found that yes it does does sparse attention provide additional benefits when applied to already efficient multi-head latent attention by deep -seek? well deep -seek found that it does but i also tried uh, I got some mixed results, I think, uh, depending on like sequence length, and, but I trained this just like a little bit like on one GPU for like 5-10 minutes just to see like the loss uh, going down. I need to get more GPUs by the way, but um, I kind of got mixed results. Maybe the like this is too small or the implementation issue, but this is an uh, area of active progress, but nevertheless, you can find my code here and deep six code um, on top of this uh, blog there is a url but i'm not sure if they implemented it in a simple way they just like made like cuda kernels and stuff but here you can find my code where i implemented it in pytorch we also want to figure out scaling laws for this so higher sequence like how does it scale and the uh, larger models with more parameters how does that scale how does that scale as well so both sequence length and models and then ideas for future research is why do we need this uh, weight in the indexer score as I explained? What's the optimal k value for different sequence length, maybe for different model sizes as well? I recommend watching my DeepSeq V3 from scratch course, a link below, to understand how multi-head latent attention by DeepSeq works. I explained it very well there, and then they just apply uh, their sparse attention uh, importance scores to it. I also used Quen to translate this blog to Chinese, but uh, I don't know if, <laughs> if this is correct Chinese. So uh, if any of you speak Chinese, you can check like if this, is, is, this makes any sense. And you can also join my school community to learn AI research, seven day free trial, $9 a month. We have uh, courses, LLMs, neural networks, everything. We have these three large language models from scratch. You're gonna learn so much everything. Uh, we have like our own LLM that you can just copy paste and it will uh, self-train. You can understand the code, how it works. For example, here you want to be able to master a single neuron, like math and how it works. And uh, I'm going to be adding more course, courses, more lessons, and in the community, we're going to be discussing uh, everything, how, like, if you need any help, we're going to have, like, daily lessons and uh, help you learn. I want to make it as accessible as many people as possible and this allows me to do like this open source youtube full time i don't need to get a job so i want to just make it as accessible everything as possible 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.